This is part 2 of chapter 1.3 for standard 6. Autobiography of a great Indian bustard. So come along, let's read and understand it. This video was made just for you. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. Let's continue. So it tells us that, you know that we birds lay eggs and our young ones hatch out of the eggs. So we know that all birds lay their eggs, lay eggs. Okay, and the young ones, that is the young babies, the young chicks, come out of, hatch out of the eggs. Now, mother GIB lays just one egg. And what's a GIB? It's a short form for the great Indian bustard. Another, a funny term, isn't it? To call itself the GIB. So, we love short forms. Now, here, even the great Indian bustard is made a short form with, of its name. So, mother GIB lays just one egg. Okay, not many eggs. Just one egg and it lays directly on the ground. Okay, so no nest. They don't build a nest. They directly lay it on the ground. We don't believe in building nest. So it's telling us they don't, don't, they don't build the nest. But, but it's saying, it's continuing. Let's see what it says. But we have a special trick to protect the eggs from the predators. So they have a, a very special trick. How to protect its eggs from predators. Now who are predators? Animals that eat other animals are called predators. So they protect them. So let's find out how. What is a special trick that they do? The egg looks like a stone. Oh my goodness. So here the egg, normally the eggs are white or a little, you know, creamish in color. But the egg of a great Indian bustard bird looks like a stone. Okay, so if you can see in the picture over here, there are three eggs over here, but it, it this bird lays only one egg, isn't it? So it is looking like a stone, little, you know, grayish color. Now, monitor lizards. Now, they are a species of lizards. They are big lizards. They live in grasses. So monitor lizards, foxes, dogs, pigs, snakes and eagles are enemies of my egg and chick. Enemies means they try to steal the eggs, eat the eggs, eat the chicks, okay, harm the chicks. So that is why the great Indian bustard is calling it the enemies. All these animals are the enemies, okay. But my wife protects the egg from all of them. So the, uh, the mother, mother uh, great Indian bustard is very, very alert and it protects its eggs and the chicks and it doesn't allow all these predators to come close to it. Now, by the time our young ones hatches out of the egg, rains arrive. Okay, so that means they, the when it hatches, it is time and it starts raining at that time. So, it means that they lay the egg at the end of summer, isn't it? So, at the end of summer, they lay the eggs and when it is time to hatch, it is the rainy season. So, there are many, many, uh, you know, advantages of this. Now, let's read about it. There is plenty of grass. So, as the rain arrives, there is plenty of grass. Swarming with insects. Swarming with insects means groups of insects are moving about. So, there is plenty of grass and there are a lot of insects. So, what happens? Fresh food for my family. Isn't it? So, the whole family gets good food. They don't have to go around running about anyway. And as it is a young one, young birds are very, very small. So, they get food very easily. Young ones of other birds soon fly away from the nest. Okay, we know that the other birds, the chicks of the other birds grow very fast. Within a few days, within a few weeks, they grow very fast and they fly off. But a great Indian bustard mother and chick stay together for one whole year. Isn't it a very long time to stay together as a bird? So the great Indian bustard mother and the chick, that is a baby, stay together for one year. And what, what, does, what do they do during that period? The chick learns many good habits from the mother. So the mother bird teaches everything to the chick. How to live in that habitat. How to, you know, uh, get food. How to survive from the enemies. So all these things the mother bird teaches. And only when the chick is ready. That is, it takes nearly one year for the chick to get ready. And it is able to live on its own. Then the chick will fly off from the mother. Now let's continue. 
you may have heard about a great human friend of ours so who is this human friend of the great indian bustard dr salim ali now let me tell you a little bit of dr salim ali he was an indian ornithologist and naturalist sometimes referred to as a bird man of india salim ali was the first indian to conduct systematic bird surveys across india and wrote several bird books so he was the one to you know actually make a big survey that is study about the indian birds so that is why the great indian bustard is calling dr salim ali their friend so he would not allow any birds to be killed or destroyed or you know harming the birds now Dr Salim Ali had even suggested that we should be given the status of the national bird of the country you know who is the uh, national bird of our country the peacock but he saying but the honor went to the beautiful relative the peacock so now the peacock is our national bird so dr salim ali was the one who said no the great indian bustard should be given that honor of being called the national bird but the peacock is our national bird now i am happy to tell you that i am the state bird of rajasthan so even if it is not the national bird of india it is the state bird of rajasthan we have got 10 sanctuaries for our protection now what are sanctuaries are sanctuaries are areas in their natural habitat where it is protected that is there are forest officers who look after them they there is no oh, you know they do see to that that nobody attacks them nobody spoils their habitat or you know they are killed for various reason regions so such places are called sanctuaries so there are 10 such sanctuaries for our protection but but the sad part is sadly a number is still going down that is the population of the great indian bustard is going down it is reducing day by day we used to live in all parts of india so all over india they were seen earlier but slowly the growing population of man pushed us away from more than 90% of our home regions so because of the population of india what happened is all their habitats were taken away by the indian by the uh, human population so therefore when the habitat is lost they are not able to survive they cannot adapt into a new environment new place it takes lot of time so therefore their numbers are reducing day by day so nearly 90% okay of their home region that region where they lived has been taken away by man so they cannot live now over there isn't it so we are afraid of hunters that kill us for fun so there are lots of people who go hunting just for fun okay we also die due to electric pole lines you know when they fly there are electric wires that are there so they get entangled in it and they get killed that we can't see while flying so they can't see those electric wires or the electric power lines that uh, when they are flying so they get killed because of that we are losing our homes okay so that is how they are you know losing their homes also they don't have any place to live now all the grasslands are taken away by the humans today only the last 200 of us are left in the whole world isn't it very very sad to know that only 200 of the great indian bustards are left okay and that also the numbers are going down and down so we need your support says selling it's uh, urging us it is pleading with us that human beings please please support us please take care of us we need your support and love in order to survive to in order to be able to live so they say that we need to survive so it is asking us can you please help us can you help us please okay so how can we help how can we be help 
helpful so here it is telling us the answer it is telling us that you can write letters to your leaders okay so write letters and plead with them to protect us not allow hunters to hunt us and make an appeal to help us so you can write letters make posters make awareness to the different kind of people you know bring the awareness that the great indian bustard needs to be protected you can make my drawing and submit it to your teacher you can discuss this with your parents come to see us at a sanctuary because now you will not see us in other places so now they are only found in the sanctuaries that is the protected places okay so they are found only in sanctuaries and sadly saying that who knows if humans don't help us none of us will be left so there will not be a single great indian bastard left on this earth all will die so it is you know it is appealing to us to protect it so it is our duty to protect it now so on this earth you will only see us in pictures so he's saying you will not be able to see this see us at all not even in the sanctuaries because now there are only 200 of us left only 200 of the great indian bastards are left so soon if they if even the with the last one dies then we will be left only in pictures now this particular autobiography this beautiful article was written by dr pramod patel answer the following questions and write your answers in the comment section below do solve the textual exercise and to check the answers for the textual exercise and for more free worksheets please visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com